Hello everyone, my name is Ivan Skodia and today we're going to be working with Tween. Now, lately I've noticed a lot of mm, conversations about how to implement Tween and, and a lot of newcomers are wondering how they can implement Tween in their project. So I figure let's create two examples of how we can use Tween or at least how most people would probably <laughs> use Tween. So let's start a new project. I'm going to create one node to contain two buttons. So I'm going to use a control node, I'm going to rename this to main I'm gonna press Ctrl S to save or just go to scene and select save scene and then save. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use two buttons. On one of the buttons we're going to interpolate property which means we're going to gradually change the property from a start value to an end value and at the end we're going to interpolate a method and I'm going to show you how we can do that. So let's begin by creating a button node. So right click select add child node. Let's search for button and add that. I'm going to rename this to button1. I'm going to write some text on our button such as smooth right. So whenever we press this button, we're going to use tween to make the button slowly move towards the right. On our button 1, let's begin by right clicking and adding another child node which will be tween. So let's rename it tween to a tween with lower capital letters. Let's go into button 1, let's create a script on button 1. So right click button 1 and select add script. Let's call it button underscore one dot gd and hit create. Let's remove all comments. Let's remove ready because we don't even need that because it's quite easy to set up a tween. On ready var tween equals to get node and then we will add the relative path to our tween which is simply tween. Now what we want to do is whenever we press button 1 which means we have to run func underscore pressed we want to start our tween. So we'll enter tween dot start. But before this will do anything, we want to make sure we interpolate a property. So the way we're gonna do that is by entering tween dot interpolate property. The first value we'll enter will be our object that we are going to manipulate, and that will be our button, which means we're gonna add self. Then we will enter the string property. And the string property is found by selecting button one, and then you navigate to the property you wish to edit. So in our case, I want our button to move towards the right, so I'm gonna be changing the position. So just hover your mouse over the position and then it will say property rect slash pass and that is the name of our string. So if you wanted to change for example the size, you will hover over size and the property string will be rect slash size. So let's add in our rect pass property by entering rect pass. And then we begin with the initial value and that will be the current position of our button which we can get by just entering get pass. And then we want to enter destination of the final value of our tween which will be get pass plus some movement. So I'm gonna enter vector 2 and then let's move 50 pixels towards the right and 0 in the y axis. Then we will need the time it takes to move from beginning to end. So if we wanted it to take one second we'll just enter one here. And then we need a tween type and that is the behavior of our tween. So if you enter tween dot we can get a list of transition types. We have sine, quint, quart, quad and so on. There are many of those you can try out. I don't even know what most of these does. So for our example, I'm just gonna stick to linear. I recommend you experiment with them yourself to figure out the type of transition you wish to have. Our last input will be the ease out. So let's enter tween.ease and you have several options of easing in out, ease out in, is out, is in out. And it is as it sounds. If you were to select is out, it will gradually stop nearing the end. Is in is the opposite. It will gradually accelerate until it hits a abrupt stop. And then we have mix of them both. So I'm just gonna select is out for this and then end it all with a bracket. So let's review a bit here. We have our tween. So this will get the node when we start our scene and ready runs. And then when we are pressing our button, this will run and it will trigger a tween interpolate property. So wherever our button currently is, we're gonna start moving from that position and then move it slightly towards the right 50 pixels. And that's gonna take one second. Then we're gonna use a transition, a linear transition and eventually ease out near the end. If we now were to hit play, this should work. So let's hit this play button here. Let's press the button and hope everything works. And it does. So what if I were to keep clicking this, what would happen? Well, every time I'm clicking this, we are stopping the current movement and begin the process all over again. So, if I were to stop now, it would take exactly one second from when I stopped for it to end, because all the last click will override all the previous ones. But what if we didn't want that? What if we wanted the movement to complete before we can even do this again? Let's use a boolean called 
bar is running. And by default, let's set it to false, because it's not running by default. So, we want to enable this if we are not running. So if is running is false, we can press the button and start our tween. But we have to make sure to set it to true when it enables. So when this runs, this is gonna be true, and you won't be able to press this until is running has been turned back off. And that will be done by using a tween signal. So let's select the tween from the editor. Let's go into signals and double click tween complete. This will create a method called on tween tween complete. Let's make sure to connect it with the button and not the main, because we don't even have a script on main, so that wouldn't work. So let's select our button 1 and hit connect. That will create this function which allows us to handle it. So when this completes, we want to turn this running back to false. And this allows us to press this all over again. And let's make sure that this works. So let's hit play again. Let's hit move right. As you can see, it doesn't allow me to, to move it while it's moving until it's stopped. So we know that works. And that's a good way to, for example, control movement within a grid. So if you had a top-down game, you could use tween to move between grids. So how do we do this using method instead of property? I'm gonna create another button and I'm gonna show you an alternate way of handling this from code. So I'm not gonna create a node manually. So let's create a button. Let's select it, let's rename this to button underscore two. Let's right click and add a script to our button. I'm going to name the script button underscore 2.gd and hit create. I'm going to remove comments. And inside ready, we want to get our tween object. So I'm going to enter tween equals tween.new. And then on the top here, we're going to create the tween variable var tween. So whenever we start, we are initializing a tween object into our tween. And then we want to make sure to add it to our scene. So I'm going to add child tween, and that will create a tween as a child of button 2, similar to button 1. So we want to do the same as we did button 1. We want to get a func pressed, we want our tween to interpolate method instead of property. And it's pretty much the same as previously. We're going to add ourself as the object, but now we're going to enter a string name. So I'm going to call this string tweening. And then we get our initial position. We get our next expected position, which is get pass plus vector 2, and let's move towards the left. So let's enter minus 50 and 0 in the y axis. Then let's take one second to perform that action and get our tween translinear. And lastly, our tween ease out and end it all with brackets. So now we need to create the tweening function. So I'm gonna copy this, I'm going to paste it below here, func tweening, and that expects a value. So enter a value here. And this is where we're gonna do the actual movement. This is the in-between logic. So if, so if I were to print our value here, whenever I press the button, we're gonna begin interpolate using a method. And then we're gonna tween start. So let's make sure to move our button somewhere we can see it. Let's name it move left. Let's hit the play again. Let's press it and see the output below. As you can see, it printed quite a lot, and this happens each tick, each frame this were to move, it would run this function, and you can see an updated value from beginning to end. So let's close this again, let's go back into our script, and let's now move it. So let's enter set pass, and just enter the value inside there. So if I were to do this again, move left, it's gonna move left. So this is a way to handle logic in, in between tweens. So if, for example, you wanted to prevent it from leaving the screen, you could do a if check here and take a look and see if it's negative, if it's less than zero. If it's less than zero, then don't move it, and it should stop at the wall here, so even if you press this, it would stop moving. So it's just a way to handle the logic. So hopefully that gave you some greater insight of how this is handled. And maybe it gave you a few ideas of how you can use it yourself. Just know that there is always documentation to get more information if you need it, just by searching up tween and selecting the class. So thank you so much for watching this, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and I hope to see you in a future video. Bye-bye.